Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. This is another paid request, this time for Dan. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics or randomness or out of the blueness, whatever it may be, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. In the info box below the video if I learn how to talk. But this is for the Babysitter from 2017, which I know there's got a sequel, the Babysitter 2 Killer Queen, before I understand that was just pretty much a remake of this film kind of the same type of plot and this with the same villains which that doesn't sound like much but this one I was pleasantly surprised and yes it's directed by Mick G yes Mick G himself but I enjoyed it I enjoyed the story I enjoyed the characters I thought it had some fun sense of humor to it and while Mid G sometimes put a little bit too much style into the movie. Uh, I did come away from this being pleasantly surprised. I like the setup as simple but effective of this dirty kid, but he's not annoying. He's not irritating. Uh, I forget the actor's name, but I thought he did a good job. He was likable. He was easy to root for. You have these annoying bullies. But then he's helped out by Samara Weaving, who is the babysitter. She's beautiful, she's hot. But Samara, she's been in other stuff. She was in Ready or Not. She was in Guns Akimbo. She's been in a few other stuff. And uh, the stuff I've seen her in, she's been a pretty decent actress. And I thought she did a good job here. Very easy on the eyes, but also... You see why the kid trusts her. And she seems like she genuinely likes the kid as well. Not in that way, but I mean just... You know, Friend-wise. And she's a nice babysitter. I mean, they she picks him up and they go to places and treats him well. There's some fun dialogue, like, okay, let's say you had a, a team, an intergalactic team, based on movies, TV, uh, of sci-fi, who would you have? And she's like, well, I would have Kirk and Picard, Ripley, uh, Will Smith, and Jeff Goldblum. And you don't find the kids until much later, but... And like, the parents of the kid, they don't seem dickish. They seem likable enough with a little sense of humor to them. Uh, there's some fun play on words, like the the nerdy kid. He's a bit of too of an in, too innocent. Like he goes, "Does that make me a Protestant?" And she's like, "Oh, you mean prostitute?" And, and no, that doesn't make you a prostitute. Like, I thought it did a decent enough job building up what type of characters these are, and. Again, I feel sympathy for the lead where he says, I just want to feel normal. I just feel weird most of the time. And there's some decent directing choices. Like when the babysitter arrives, it goes to the room, into the house to meet the everyone. It's done in entirely POV. So like the kid's POV as he's talking to the parents and talking to the babysitter. What I mean by... Sometimes a bit too stylish. There are times these texts will pop on screen. Like there's a boy who gets a pocket knife. And then the text will go, pocket knife. And then when it appears again, it will go, pocket knife, bitches. You don't need that text. Like, sometimes, like, but Jesus, calm down a bit. But it went at a fast pace. It's only 80-some minutes long. And when you come to find out, spoilers... Because he's ready to go to sleep. He f he's asleep for a bit. He wonders what does the babysitter do at night. Oh. he She's with a bunch of other friends. Playing spin the bottle. But then there's this nerdy kid there. And uh. Well. Samara stabs him in the fucking head with two knives. 
I like the special effects used in the movie. I thought for the most part they worked rather well. The sense of humor, like the one guy and where he turns, he always get blasted blood. Some of the gore was decent. Of course, the kid realizes not only are they killers, but they're devil worshippers. That's why they killed this nerdy kid. And... I thought, again, when it got going, it went pretty fast. I didn't think it was boring. There were moments that did make me chuckle. And I have to get into spoilers for that, so... Extra spoilers. I like the bit where... They find out that he's awake. They tie him down. He gets knocked out a bit. When he wakes up, he sees the one guy and goes, Why is he shirtless? <laughs> and the others go, That's your first question? Which, granted, that was a question I had too. Why is he shirtless? <laughs> and then I like that the kid tries to play dumb. I thought it was a smart maneuver. Where, okay, I, I know. I know you, you guys, because uh, what they try to do, they try to take his blood. Because they need the blood of a virgin. So they had used a needle and he had to pretend to be asleep and fight back on it. They left. Then he tried to escape, but then he was woozy from the blood loss. Was found out. And I, I, yeah, I like that he was playing with them, going, okay, you're right. I, 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 I did, you, you had blood for your science project. But why were you awake? I, I was, you know, figuring you have a, a, what they call an orgy. Any place dumb, like what an orgy is. Actually, no, he thought it was going to be an orgy. That's why he was awake. I was waiting for you guys to do an orgy. And she's the one that says it's the blood's for a science project. Because he goes, I'm sorry, I'm fucking up and explaining. I apologize. It's late at night. I apologize for that. But he's going about. Oh that blood. I'm sure you don't use it for the orgy thing. And the, because she goes. It was for a science project. The orgy? No not the orgy. The blood. But I'm doing a shit job explaining. I apologize. All I say is. The way the dial was going about. I thought it was rather fun. And I. It it made me chuckle. And again, I like that the kid wasn't just stupidly going, I know what you guys do. You guys are killers. I'm going to turn you in. Because there have been movies that someone was that fucking stupid. I'm like, come on. I also like that he's trying to cut the ropes and someone goes, oh, we can see you. There's a mirror there. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> There's a mirror that they could see that he was trying to cut through with the pocket knife. And they said there's some nice gore gaps, like when the cops come in, because the kid had called the cops before. Uh, one gets like a fire poker in the eye, and one gets a throat cut, and then the blood splashes like it's Kill Bill. And then the kid, Primus has to take care of these people one by one. And in a way, he's kind of, in a weird way, Home Alone is a horror film. I think in a weird way. Where there's people in his house, he's got to protect himself in his house, and spoilers, he pushes one guy, he gets his neck impaled on an award that was on the bottom. Uh, one lady, he's hiding in the basement with all these tarantulas on him, he escapes, shoots like a rocket he found, and bud spray, there's an explosion. Not done the most expensive way. But maybe they just had, you know, a budget they could use. I rather, the way they did it, I was fine with. I think it was better than having more of a CGI glory fest. I didn't mind the way they handled it. Robbie Amell, is a, he was a guy of the group that was shirtless, like the jock. He did a lot better job here than he, he's the guy who played Chris in the new Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. I thought he did a much, be much better job here. Because he was actually. Had more personality. He's joking with the kid. Even though he's trying to kill him. He stops him to give him a pep talk. 
Like, come on. Wait, that boy over there is aiding your house. What are you going to do about it, huh? Go do something about it. And when the kid gets knocked down, it's like, next time, don't try to taunt. Just try to beat him. And it's actually uh, kind of a fun Billy Jack reference. Uh, at one point, there's a head explosion from a shotgun. And, like, this whole character arc where your lead kid is overcoming fear. Because at the beginning, he was fearful of everything. He was fearful of getting a shot. He was fearful of the bullies. He was fearful of pretty much anything else. And it's this overarching overarching conquest of fear for this little kid so again spoilers at the end he gets into a car he's got queen music we are the champions goes in crashes this crazy flip which that overindul it was an overindul <laughs> indulgence of mid g's part but uh, i was fine with that Jeez, i thought it was a cool looking shot the way car like, like a michael bay film just the way it flips and right into the house. Now granted, when it land, when it lands on S Samara weaving, she should be dead. Pretty much, it, like landed on her legs, I guess, and her face is all kind of all fine. But I do think they had to have a fun conversation. not fun, but a nice little conversation at the end. Now I don't like. There's one thing I don't like about the film. Because I don't have a lot of issues with it. The mid credit scene. It's over. It's done. Then in the middle of the credits. It goes back. A firefighter gets attacked by Samara Weaving. And then the movie's over again. And I'm sitting there going. Well wait a minute. She just had a fucking car hit her. And... If it hit her leg, she wouldn't be able to walk or run or stand up. And I read up on the sequel. So spoilers if you haven't seen the sequel. I read up on it because I was curious. She comes back at the end of the sequel and she's a good guy. I'm sitting there going, but here... She kills a fireman. Or she's ready to stab him. But then in the next film, she comes back to the end and she's a good guy? Like, just get rid of the end credit scene. Yeah. Not even the end, the mid credit scene. You didn't need that. That left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Like, uh, I hate when they do that. Just end your movie. If you want to make the sequel, you can make any fucking thing you want with the sequel. But just end your movie... Worry about that later. I hate sequel bait endings. I hate sequel bait shit. I've always hated that. I don't think it's ever needed. Because no one comes out and goes, oh, I love that sequel bait ending. No one ever says that. No one ever says, oh man, I love that. What's your favorite scene in the movie? When they sequel baited us. No one ever sees it. So why do people keep fucking doing it? I don't know why. I don't know why. People always go back to the the Terry ending. To me, that's like a lightning in the bottle thing. Maybe Friday the 13th, 1980. Not all the time. But other than that, I like the, the characters. I like the lead kid. I like the sense of humor. I like the gore. I like the, again... Maybe typical, but I still am a sucker for the arc of the someone overcoming their fear, becoming a stronger person by the end of it. Some of the Magiisms I was fine with, like the big ramp of the car going to the house, even though it didn't seem like do much jack shit to Samara Weaving's character, so it made it seem as if that was completely pointless. So I did, that's why the, the mid credits kind of sours the taste of it a little bit. But I like the, the death scenes of the other villains. I like that it was kind of a, 
Home Alone R-rated situation in a way. And uh, better at the R-rated beat. Just like, oh, mid-G. But, uh, I mean, when I think of mid-G's films, I don't hate Terminator Salvation. And his Charlie's Angels films, they're dumb, but they're fun. They're flashy. They're fun. They're flashy. Three beautiful ladies with their titties ready to pop out. They're a lot better than the new, bland, boring, snooze fest Charlie's Angels of 2019. The the 2000s Charlie's Angels, they kind of pop bubblegum, pop bubblegum movies that are flashy and dumb, but they were fast-paced and fun. A lot of style, little substance, but the style was fun. And I didn't grow with the Charlie's Angels TV show, so I have no emotional attachment to it. So, I mean, Mid-G, I don't even think he's one of the worst directors, Sally. I don't. I really don't. And this, again, I would probably say... I would say I would say it's the best film he's done. I'd probably say this is the best film he's done. And I didn't, again, it didn't overstay its welcome. Eighty some minutes in and out, boom, done, center. So I, I like that. So with that said, fun movie. Again, the sequel sounds like it ain't worth spit, but I like what they did with the lead kid. Uh, he was handled well. Uh, there's no messages that I noticed of like PC Brigade and uh, short to the point of entertaining so with that said thanks for watching take care we'll see you guys later bye bye